What's a dark practice in your profession that we regular folks would know nothing about? Story 1. There is a problem in substance abuse treatment in the United States called body brokering. Substance abuse treatment can be very expensive, and insurance companies pay a lot of money for a patient to be there. Treatment centers will hire body brokers to find addicts with the best, highest paying insurance and entice them to check in to the specific center. The treatment center then gives the broker a commission from the insurance money. This can go as far as body brokers literally putting more drugs into the hands of some addicts before they come in, because the higher the level of drugs in your system upon admit, the more and longer the insurance company will pay to the treatment center. Brokers will also hire other addicts in a pyramid scheme type way to check in to the treatment center, make friends with the other patients, and upon discharge encourage relapse so they come back to treatment. Story 2. I work at a county jail in the Midwest. The most disturbing thing about jail is the terrible loop some inmates get stuck in. Many inmates with mental issues get caught in this loop where they can't have any clothes or items because they will try to end themselves and they are locked in their cell for 23 hours a day. This makes them more angry, so when they are finally let out, they lash out at staff and then are locked down again. It's a vicious cycle for a lot of inmates and makes a lot of mental illness a whole lot worse. Staff can't do anything though because if they allow the inmate with mental illness to socialize, then they risk a lawsuit from those around them because of the individual's history of violent outbursts. The majority of hospitals won't take them because they won't risk their staff. So they are just stuck in a room and their only hope is consistent medication stabilizing them. Story 3. Customs broker here. Every day, hundreds of thousands of containers and air shipments arrive into United States territory. The volume of customs entries entered every day is staggering. When we get licensed to be a customs broker, we are trained and tested not just on knowledge, but ethics. We even take a pledge to partner with CBP to uphold the law and cooperate with them should we come across anything suspicious. Why so much emphasis on this? Customs can't actually screen everything coming in. I'm oversimplifying, but CBP basically works on the honor system. You file an entry saying what the shipment is, and they just take your word for it and release it. This happens hundreds of thousands of times a day. Maybe at best, customs can screen 3-7% of what's coming in. The rest have just waved through. Story 4. At a very large pizza chain restaurant that remains widely popular, we had these perforated pans for thin crust and stuffed crust pizzas. They'd get washed in the dishwasher by the hundreds per day, and at least half would still have burnt cheese and crap on them. Well, they were just stacked to dry. When making new pizzas in those pans, sometimes the pans that were left to dry overnight grew bits of mold around the burnt cheese. We were told just to put the dough on top because otherwise we'd never keep up with the orders if we rewashed everything. The manager said, don't worry, it gets cooked. Story 5. Lots of performing musicians don't ever really get over stage fright. Many of them take beta blockers to help with nerves. However, it's less about the mental side of it, and more about the fact that you physically can't perform if you get so nervous that your hands are shaking. That's what beta blockers help with. You'll probably still feel anxious mentally, but any physical effects like shaking or sweating will be gone. Not really a dark secret, as there are not usually bad side effects of beta blockers, but I guess some people might see that as cheating in a way. Personally, I find it kind of inspiring, knowing that lots of people struggle with the same thing as me, and there's a solution that isn't just suck it up and deal with it. Story 6. Many hotels often sell rooms multiple times. Used to work in an airport hotel. Knowing that chances are some guests won't arrive due to missed or delayed flights, we sell more rooms that we have. You have guests checking out from 2-3 a.m. due to early flights. So even though the room is technically still theirs, you quickly and sometimes poorly clean the room and tell the arriving unexpected guest or new booking there's a random computer issue and to wait 20 minutes 
and then check them into the departed guest's room, praying. Multiple times, I've had to run a kettle under a cold tap to hide the fact the previous guest used it 15 minutes before the new guest arrives. Story 7 Documentary Editor here. This varies depending on the content genre, but documentaries can never be completely true. The ethics of filmmaking is disputed among many theorists. Those who work on documentaries understand that they are almost as fictional as completely made-up stories. Again, this depends on the project, but some common practices like frankenbiting, splicing sentences and words to create a different message, used especially in reality TV and really dramatic docs, are necessary to make a documentary watchable. There are hundreds of hours of footage, and if you see or hear something in a documentary, the creators wanted you to be exposed to that over a different piece of footage. This can lead to lives being destroyed, whether a person is posed as the enemy or antagonist, or they are displayed in a way that does not represent them accurately, which is most, if not all, of the time. I've had to take mental health days off from work because I become so worried about how these people's lives will be affected by my decisions. Story 8. I don't know if this is a total secret, but a lot of the talking points about how expensive lawyers are, or how plaintiffs' lawyers get unreasonably high payouts for doing little work, are driven by corporations trying to discourage people from suing them. For example, most plaintiffs' lawyers are working entirely on a contingency basis meaning that they advance all costs with the risk of no reimbursement and don't see a dime unless they win, and almost all will give you a free consultation. But by spreading the false narrative of, it's going to cost you to even talk to a lawyer about that, big companies discourage you from even consulting one and finding out the truth. Story 9. Services costs are based on how much money you look like you have. I'm a woodworker contractor. I come to your house, you tell me what you want done, my jumping off point is how much the market will bear. If I think you can afford a $4,000 solid oak bookcase, that's what I will quote you. I can make a cheaper version that I make less money on, but why would I do that? It's not that I'm just ripping you off, I'm selling you a better product, but in doing so I make more money. So when getting a quote, it can pay to be very direct about what you want to spend, or you are going to be sold the most expensive version they think you can afford. Story 10. A lot of unethical shipping companies even today dump a lot of garbage, oily sludge, waste contaminated water, and oil out when sailing in international waters far away from the shore. There are only a few handful of players today who are actually executing business trades while still keeping the carbon footprint and environment as one of their core policies. I am glad to be working with one one them. I am a merchant marine who works as an engineer on mega container ships. Story 11 church worker here. This may be specific to the church I work for, but I think it's pretty common for bigger 1,000 plus members churches. They're two-faced. They'll tell the janitorial crew, janitorial service is truly a ministry, and it's so good and so important. But guess what? When the church needs to make cutbacks, we're some of the first ones screwed over. We're the ones expected to clean until 2-3 a.m. on a Sunday morning after people have used the building until midnight. As a woman, I've straight up been harassed by a guy pretty high up in the church hierarchy, and nobody really has my back. There are so many fake, judgmental, hateful people who hide behind the guise of Christianity. People who will lock people out of the building and laugh at them. They tell the people who aren't dressed presentable enough to sit in the back if that person isn't run off by their frozen, hateful stares. This is so anti what a church and Christianity should be. Story 12. You know when you are checking out and the store offers to round up your total and donate that to a charity? Well, the company is using this to pay into their own charity with oversight costs, etc., who then pay into another charity. They are also then using this charitable donation as a tax offset. You are much better off choosing a charity yourself and saving the five ten cents each time and donating it at once to the same place. 
you get a small tax offset and know the money is going to a place you have researched. Story 13. I used to manage an Asian supermodel for about five years. I was frequently brought along when she met with other celebrities, usually Western, sometimes other Asian. I was still teaching her English as I am native and I am fluent in her language to ensure she understood everything and didn't make any major cultural faux pas. I don't know if this qualifies as dark per se, but questionable for sure. I won't name names, but many of these actors, musicians, etc. also have other businesses and brands. They would sit down and offhandedly formulate what fashions trends they would start soon, so that they could have goods waiting to be sold to accommodate people participating in these trends that they, themselves, started. They would also plan out propping each other's business plans up by reinforcing the trends with appearances, comments to fashion magazines, etc. The first time I heard this kind of talk, I thought they were just being full of themselves, as they are very prone to do anyway. And then I saw the effects of the talks happening a few months later, over and over. This is what we'll have people wear in the fall. Started production yet? Next week. Send me the sample when it's ready. I'll make sure my demographic is on it. Your concert in NYC is in June, right? Yeah, I'm a medium. Here's my manager's number. She'll make sure I get it in time for the show. Story 14. Alarm camera tech for residential and business. The monitoring center you pay for is a lie. There is a pretty good chance no one is responding or it is being sent to a call center handling tons of calls. But that doesn't matter because the police won't usually dispatch for unconfirmed alarms, if at all. The gear is stupidly cheap and easy to install. I literally had one day of training and just looked everything up on Google or YouTube. It's all on there, including install and override codes for most systems since the 90s. Most of the stuff they sell you is pretty worthless. You are better off monitoring and servicing your system yourself. You can get it all on eBay for pennies. What you'll be charged by your company, even used, can be reprogrammed and set up fine. If you really want to be secure, get a good dog. But tons of you are locked into years of contracts over basically 30, 40 worth of gear. Story 15. A lot of the companies that are doing the background checks that are required you pass before you are employed, look the other way while your information is siphoned off to servers in Russia and China passing your information indirectly to the governments of said countries. Some financial firm's data, when you sign up for an account with someone like PayPal, for example, will end up being shared with over 80 financial institutions and governments, which is something that such firms would rather you not fully understand, even if they eventually admit to it by way of their 2S. Story 16. I have worked in Vietnam since 2013. I have this habit, especially when owners don't want to be present for their pet's euthanasia, in which I give their pets chocolate, pieces of my meal, meat, bread, cheese, even onions, garlic, or the best wet food from our pantry prior to them being given the drugs that help them pass. They don't suffer from the damaging effects of those foods if they're being euthanized minutes later. I like to give them a taste of something they would never get to try otherwise. Of course, I would never do this unless the pet was already en route to the room where the procedure would take place. Story 17. I worked in a small chain of Japanese restaurants when I was in college run by two Taiwanese women who had so many questionable practices. Here are a few that come to mind. We had a tip jar at the register along with one of those UNICEF jars near the drinks. Employees never saw any of those tips, and the charity money was also pocketed by the owners. The cooks all lived in the same house that was owned by the owners of the restaurant. They were given a certain amount of money each month and allowed to live there rent-free. But they only got one day off a week. All of them were undocumented and great guys who I was friends with. Delivery drivers who started in the morning or ended at night had the responsibility of picking up the cooks or dropping them off at their houses at night. One of the owners, Carol, 
was the main reason why people quit all the time. She was a major cow who loved berating people. Her favorite rite of passage was sharpening her sushi knife next to you as you washed dishes and then all of a sudden slapping you on the arm with the back end, scaring the hell out of you. Carol had a habit of watching the cameras and calling the restaurant if she saw you standing around and screaming at you. Story 18. Schools will lower their admittance standards for international students since schools depend on their money to stay afloat. The more cuts the system does towards the public system, the worse this gets. Not only do you have lower teaching standards just by having outdated infrastructure and bloated classes, but the mean skill level of your classes is also lowered. I've seen students attend classes who were completely unable to speak any English. When I say any, I mean any. They had to start with, hello, my name is, I, you, he, she, it, and chair, desk, table, weeks into their program. And because of the way class hours and modules are constructed, it is impossible for them to take two months off to take full-time language classes to solve the problem. So they have to waste everyone's time and money, theirs, for months and months, while failing everything. Story 19. Not my industry, but I was researching it before being laid off. Antimicrobial doesn't mean much. Lots of people are talking about how their products are antimicrobial right now, for obvious reasons. Antimicrobial is not antiviral. It doesn't prevent COVID-19, and most things that say they prevent COVID-19 have only been tested against substitutes from cats. Further, things can be advertised as containing or using antimicrobials, but they may only protect the product from things like fungal or bacterial degradation and do nothing for you, the user. Now, to advertise as antimicrobial, it does have to be proven effective, but it could be effective against strep, staph, or something much larger than the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Don't buy antimicrobial products or cars or whatever thinking it will prevent you from getting COVID-19 without doing your research. Story 20. Semi-migrant families who work in agriculture in California often live in housing provided by either the contractor getting them field work or the processing plant or dehydrator they work at. These are on small lots in the fields and even sometimes on the same property as the packing plant separated by a chain link fence. Rent utilities water are all deducted directly from their check. These areas are referred to as camps. Yes, labor camps exist to this day. I did a lot of pest services for these places. They are squalor. Story 21. When you go into a phone shop to get a new mobile and we ask if you are an existing customer, it is usually because our best deals are reserved for new customers. Also, if we tell you we are out of stock on a popular phone, it is sometimes because we're down to just a couple of that device and are saving them in case we can use them to close a deal with a new customer. If you want to get the best deals you usually need to change to a new provider, you could walk out of my store after I tell you we don't have any, walk into the store next door, and transfer your number to a no-contract plan with them, then walk back into my store saying you want to bring your number across from competition, and I will somehow discover a phone in the model and color you wanted was out the back after all. Story 22. Teachers are often made to cap grade failures at 20% or lower. The students who did not demonstrate enough knowledge for credit to pass are still moved along to the next grade. This results in having ninth graders in my English 1 class who read below grade level, sometimes as stunted as on a second or third grade level. These students are constantly frustrated and can become behavior issues. It's also heartbreaking to identify and feel helpless in catching the student up due to current demands from administrators and school leaders. Story 23. Obligatory. Not really my profession, but very related. I studied archaeology for quite a while, and people are usually not happy when they want to build something. But we find archaeological artifacts here. All constructions must be stopped, sometimes for months or even years, before we do our work. Archaeology just has a higher preference, because archaeological sites are obviously destroyed for good when that new hypermarket is finished. 
a very common practice among builders is just to dump those often incredibly historically precious artifacts into the trash and never tell anyone so their construction works can continue unbothered story 24 i'm working for a pharma company most drugs you buy for one brand are the same drug you can buy from a different brand the packaging is different the tablet might be different the marketing might be different but there is only one manufacturer for both of those items and it's only a matter of your preference to pick which one you want logically you would choose the cheaper one right wrong sometimes the more expensive brand gets a higher purchase rate why simply because people trust it more that's the curse of marketing friends it sells you things you don't need and makes you feel like you need it even if you don't story 25 food service industry if you are truly unpleasant and complain about the same things each time we will not continue to give you free food comp anything make your food first or give you stellar service you will receive the food to the same standard as anyone else and service will be the same as anyone else or bare minimum if we continue this relationship where you tolerate us and we tolerate you great if you make a complaint that breaks the camel's back you will be asked to never come back with every person working in that restaurant ready to hold management to account to follow through on the banning we don't spit in food or do anything unsanitary to get back at rude and demanding customers. We are a team where the team makes food for employee meals, friends, and family. Seeing a co-worker spit in someone's food would be like seeing your brother spit in the stew that your mom will have. You are grossed out and toss the stew and your brother out of the kitchen. A job is still a job. We take pride in our food and reputation. We don't want to lose said job because some moron can't keep it together. If anything, we will do whatever it takes to get you out of our face as quickly as possible. If we get the picture that you won't get out of our face anytime soon, we take our time to rile you up so that you are more likely to demand a refund and leave because it's taking so long. Going on and on and on about your complaint means you will in fact wait longer and longer for your food to be replaced. I don't need to hear for ten minutes the great injustice of having your food order rung up, made incorrectly. I don't need it explained like I'm an idiot who can't understand words that are bigger than two syllables either. Story 26 Building codes are only actually understood and applied correctly in really important or large buildings. Even then you sometimes get a public library where you can only access books by using stairs. My first job in architecture taught me some fundamental fire safety codes wrong. I was basically just a technician and wouldn't study architecture for years after I got the job, so my bosses mostly did the code analysis. I learned the correct way years later, when I actually had to pick up code books and figure out how to not get sued. Just about every job since has also gotten these same codes wrong, and no matter how many times I explain why they are wrong, the problem persists. There are tons of buildings out there planned for about half the code required occupants because architects and plans examiners are stubborn morons. Story 27. Lots of corruption goes on in non-profit organizations that claim to do good. Many organizations build the budgets of their projects using inflated unrealistic costs that don't reflect the current market in terms of actual competitive prices of things. So what they do is they quote really high costs in their project budget lines, spend only a portion of that during the actual implementation of the project, and skim the rest of it. This also applies to the actual funds that end up going directly to beneficiaries of the nonprofit's projects. I've seen projects where literally 80% of the budget is all just staff salaries, equipment, and other resources, while the remaining 20% or less actually goes towards helping the people that the charity claims to work for. Story 28. Costumes in theater are made to be put on and taken off quickly, and accuracy is less important. Hidden zippers on Victorian gowns. Often when we think about how much detail to include in a hairpiece, 
we keep in mind most audience members will only see it from a good distance away. This is a medium budget theater. I bet higher theaters can give more attention, but we gotta take shortcuts.